What is L-Renatumab? L-Renatumab is a bispecific T-cell engaging antibody, which means that it is essentially a double-headed antibody where one end of the antibody is engineered to grab onto a target on the multiple myeloma cell and the other grabs onto a molecule on the surface of immune T cells and brings those two cells together so that the immune T cell attacks the multiple myeloma cell. So it's essentially a way of getting the patient's immune cells to attack the cancer cells by targeting them directly against the cancer cells. Well, Elranatumab is one of those uh, bispecific antibodies, not to provide any um, product um, preference, but but one of those bispecific antibodies uh, newly implemented in the treatment options for patients with multiple myeloma. Right now it is indicated after three to four relapses. For the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma, it is a bispecific antibody that specifically binds to B-cell maturation antigen, or in short, BCMA, on the plasma cell with one binding arm. The other one allows to bind to a T cell, an endogenous T cell, which allows then to bring the immune system to the tumor cell. Now, this is a very interesting approach and um, has been advanced for patients with multiple relapses. Alranatumab is not the only drug, as I mentioned. One other BCMA-specific uh, antibody has been already FDA approved. Uh, Alranatumab will likely be approved within the next few weeks also for the treatment. But I've led a clinical trial here at Miami Cancer Institute with this drug for patients with multiply relapsed uh, multiple myeloma. We saw a very good response rate in these patients with otherwise no uh, option to be treated any further. Now, it needs to be known that these bispecific antibodies are effective, but they're also associated with side effects that need to be controlled by experienced physicians. So I, I, I don't think it can just be administered in a private practice without the knowledge of what is going to happen as a side effect profile and needs to be administered in a controlled setting. In fact, um, the first five days or six days when patients get started on any of these BCMA targeting agents will be administered in the hospital to secure that if side effects like cytokine release syndrome or neurotoxicity called ICANs are developing, are being recognized early and appropriately treated. What is the target for L-Renatumab? L-Renatumab is targeted against a molecule on the surface of myeloma plasma cells and also normal plasma cells called BCMA or B-cell maturation antigen. BCMA is an attractive target for immune therapies for myeloma because although it's also expressed on other normal plasma cells and therefore cells in the normal immune system, it's not on almost any other cells in the body, which means that when we target BCMA, we're really only targeting the myeloma and some other cells in the immune system. Is l an off-the-shelf therapy? l is an off-the-shelf treatment. And off the shelf means that it's a medicine that we can give to people right at the moment that they need it. This is true of almost all of our treatments for multiple myeloma and cancer in general, except the other main category of immune therapy for myeloma, which is known as chimeric antigen receptor or CAR T cells. And CAR T cells are a treatment, an immune therapy for targeting the patient's immune cells against uh, the cancer cells that require a collection of immune cells from the patient, a manufacturing step, and then administration to the patient, which means there's almost always a delay between when the patient starts to prepare for the treatment and when they actually receive the treatment. In an off-the-shelf treatment like l that preparatory phase is not needed and it can be given right when the patient needs it. How is l administered? So in the clinical trial so far, l has been given as a weekly subcutaneous injection or an injection under the skin. It may need to be given in the hospital 
at least for the first couple of doses, but I think we're still going to need to figure out which of these medications need to be given in the hospital for observation for initial side effects and which can be given safely as an outpatient. The availability of, of uh, l ranatumab raises a lot of questions once the drug has been proven safe, whether or not it can be administered in combination with other drugs. Right now it's a monotherapy. It uh, is administered at step-up dosing in the hospital inpatient setting in the beginning. Uh, it is administered subcutaneously, which makes it a lot easier to administer after discharge. But the initial hospitalization is important to allow and monitor for the side effects of l or any other BCMA-targeting agent as they are known to induce cytokine release syndrome and or neurotoxicity. They can be recognized early, they can be effectively treated, but the prevalence of cytokine release syndrome uh, is relatively high, although it's at, at simple, we call it mini CRS because it's usually grade one or two which can be easily uh, controlled with the administration of tocilizumab, which is an interleukin-6 antibody, and the cytokine release syndrome has been associated with the release of in interleukin-6 primarily. What is the dosing schedule for l ranatumab l ranatumab like most of our bispecific T-cell engaging antibodies, is given with what we call step-up dosing, which means that we start with a low dose, and then usually give a intermediate dose before getting to the full dose. This allows us to get the most common side effect and the most important side effect, a reaction called the cytokine release syndrome, out of the way at a lower intensity with the lower initial doses because the intensity of cytokine release syndrome increases as we increase the dose of the medication. And if we get it out of the way early, we get it also out of the way at a lower intensity. In the beginning, it, it's the step up dosing is twice a week or day one, three, five, and seven, if I'm correct. Afterwards, it will be administered at a weekly doses for the first eight cycles. Afterwards, it will be bi-weekly for eight cycles. And after that, it will be administered monthly, as long as the patient tolerates and or responds to, to the drug appropriately. Are there any pre-medications used for L-Renatumab? l, -renatumab? l -renatumab in the trials being given so far was given with pre-medications for the first two doses and then without pre-medications afterward. For the first two doses, it was given with Tylenol or acetaminophen, Benadryl or diphenhydramine, and dexamethasone. What are the most common side effects from l -renatumab? The most common side effect seen with l -renatumab, as with all of our bispecific T-cell engaging antibodies, is a reaction called the cytokine release syndrome. And this happens when the medication goes into the body, <clears throat> attaches to immune T-cells and to myeloma cells, uh, gets the immune T cells to start attacking the myeloma cells, and as they do that, they release inflammatory hormones called cytokines, which cause an inflammatory reaction in the body. Most commonly, this consists of fever and fatigue, and for most people, it's relatively mild and doesn't require any intervention. But when the cytokine release syndrome gets more intense, it can cause low blood pressures and low oxygen levels. If those happen, we usually treat with an intravenous immune suppressive medication called tocilizumab, which blocks one of the cytokines released by the T cells and pretty quickly tamps down the inflammatory reaction. Cytokine release syndrome is recognized by development of fever in combination with respiratory distress or respiratory failure, which is as the name says, cytokine release. Our cytokines are molecules released by the tumor cell as a response to the immune reaction with the bispecific antibody. The neurotoxicity is a change in the mental status um, from the early stage of a little bit confusion to not recognizing the physician walking in and uh, is graded also grade one to four, which can develop independently from the cytokine release syndrome, but frequently in association with the cytokine release syndrome. Well, both mechanisms or both side effects 
are being treated separately or um, partially separately. The one with the tocilizumab, the ICANS neurotoxicity is usually treated with high dose of dexamethasone. Both mechanisms, that's important to know, are largely reversible and uh, they will go away after appropriate and early recognition and treatment. The, uh, the side effects are initiated or recognized primarily during the step-up dosing, which is exactly the reason why we're doing this. If patients didn't have cytokine release syndrome within the first cycle of treatment, it's very unlikely that they develop these uh, symptoms with subsequent cycles. Therefore, the first cycle only will be administered as an inpatient and uh, uh, all other cycles can be administered safely as an outpatient treatment. Are there any neurotoxicities from l -renatumab? Many of our immune therapies do cause neurotoxicity, uh, primarily confusion and word-finding difficulties. In the clinical trials described so far for l neurotoxicity has not been a common finding. Does l cause hypogammaglobulinemia? A common feature of our immune therapies for myeloma is that in addition to killing multiple myeloma plasma cells, they also tend to be very good at killing normal immune plasma cells that make the normal antibodies that help protect us from infection. So for most patients who get these very effective immune therapies for myeloma, we do end up over the long run seeing very low levels of normal helpful antibodies. And for most people, we end up giving regular intravenous infusions of antibodies collected from other people called intravenous immune globulin or IVIG. And although this wasn't described in the data that we have for l so far, we would tend to assume that most patients will need this kind of supportive treatment to help reduce their risk of infection. All the uh, bispecific antibody treatments and or also CAR T cells are associated with an increase in infectious complications. That is another reason why I need to point out this is not the simple treatment that can be administered in private practice. In fact, some of the CAR T-cell approaches for leukemia or for multiple myeloma or by specific antibody treatments are as complex as transplants. So we have to have the patients on infectious prophylaxis, treat them appropriately, administer intravenous immunoglobulin or IVIG, as you just mentioned, uh, prophylactically to prevent reactivation of uh, or in a reactivation and development of new infections after the treatment. Does this trial have a specific name and is there any overall response rate data? l trials are grouped under a general name called the magnetism trials with two M's at the end and each one has a number. It uh, remains to be published. Uh, so in my own experience with the administration of bispecific antibodies, we had approximately a 50% complete remission rate, which considering the patient population that that we are targeting at this point with these drugs is a significant improvement. Otherwise, there would have been no option to get them into complete remission. Uh, I may not really speculate about the duration of the complete remission at this point because those patients are still on active clinical trial. But uh, some of my patients have been on it for uh, a good year. So I remain hopeful that the uh, remission rate will, will remain. But this leads to really uh, another really important question. If <clears throat> you have an opportunity to bring patients back into complete remission after four or five relapses, do you want to be happy with having them in complete remission? Or do we need to come in with a consolidation treatment to maintain the remission for as long as possible? And those are all the key questions that we're asking right now. And I think we have to bring this also to patients' attention. Visa maturation antigen, or the targeting of, of a BCMA with bispecific antibodies is not the only approach that we have. In fact, a BCMA is only one of those. Uh, we also have other molecules that can be targeted by specific antibodies. One of them is called uh, GPRC5D, which has been described just recently. And now for the first time, I have patients on a uh, EIND, an approval that the FDA gave me to treat these patients with a bispecific antibody, particularly targeting 
GPS, GPSC 5D after relapse of treatment for BCMA targeting. And long and behold, these two patients went back into remission. And uh, so, in other words, again, we have options that we never dreamed of years ago to treat and continue to treat patients with immunotherapies rather than more chemotherapy, which yeah, has a lot of side effects in itself. Thanks for watching. By creating a HealthTree account, you can get exclusive access to the latest HealthTree University content, track your course progress, take notes, and bookmark lessons. Visit the links in the description below to get started.